Hey, what's going on Dragon Ballers? Welcome back to another profile. This time I've got a pretty creative profile for you guys. I'm honestly pretty proud of this one. So we had a subscriber request uh, that I come up with a cooler deck list and you know I want to try and do everything I can for the subscribers. So I decided to get to work on this cooler deck list and I'm honestly pretty pretty proud of it. Uh, real quick before we start, if you are interested in decks like this, if you're interested in uh, meta decks, non-meta decks, matches, a strategy series where we tell you guys a little bit of advice on how to play the game, anything like that, please consider liking and subscribing so we can get you some great Dragon Ball Super content and stick along for the ride of this video because I swear it's going to be awesome. So, all right, we've got this cooler deck profile, once again, sub-requested deck profile. So, you know, someone wanted to see a deck with this and I, you know, took a look at the leader and basically what it says is mill three. The Frieza Clan effect is pretty irrelevant, you know, the Frieza Clan cards in this type of deck are not good enough to warrant much play so I just I read this leader and all it says is mill three so that was good enough for me it's also a yellow leader it's got two good things going for it so yeah on the unawakened side of cooler mill three if you do happen to hit a Frieza clan he gains 5k for the turn but we're not playing Frieza clan so he literally just says mill three awaken at four life flip over draw two cards important thing to know is you can mill on his unawakened side uh, as many as you want and you can you can mill without declaring a number so you can just go leader effect one you can stop there two you can stop there or go to three so and you can mill on his awakened side then flip over and on the awakened side he just has mill three again same freeze of clan thing but we don't really care about that so yeah you can flip over and mill again in the same turn if you need to fuel something like a scientist foo and then when he attacks he draws one card so We'll get into the main decks because he is a because he is a mill leader. There's a heavy overwhelm lineup, and it's also just yellow good stuff. So I'll explain what, what I mean by that when I get into the profile. So two Supreme Kai of Time, World's Protector. Our other super combo is Shugesh. I do not want to dedicate the deck fully to Shugesh because of Kurnoa, and Supreme Kai of Time is one of the best super combos in the game because of how early you can get it uh, operational. So uh, I really really like two two split on this. It's really really clutch, especially when you don't have a necessarily great Shugesh play so you uh you just go to supreme kind of time to get those draws and activate it early if you need to then we have four time patrol trunks our leader mills three so this is the perfect number for this uh i just i would normally in almost any situation play uh time's choice supreme kind of time instead of time patrol but in this deck we are playing planet vegeta so he is searchable he's a searchable overall play so I am going with Time Patrol in this in this build. There's also some some extra cards we would like to hit, so it's pretty nice to go with him. Then we have three Trunks Power Overseeing Time. This card is great paired with Shugesh. Uh, if it's especially in game one when they haven't sideboarded in Kurnoa's yet, just grab back a Shugesh for your big plays. And it's a double strike threat. What I really, really like about this deck is there is a lot of double strike. So you do have a pretty good time going for game, where in a lot of the other kind of like Bardock, Goten, Storm decks, like this is technically trying to be. You have you kind of have a hard time closing out the game. Your only real threats are the two scientists food you probably play or your uh, Bardock apes. So I really like how in this deck there's a lot more late game finishers. And then getting back any card you need from your warp is really clutch, especially if it's like a super combo, like I said. Then we have three dimensional banisher foo. It's a spot removal in the deck. It can remove one battle card of any cost from the field as long as there's not a barrier. So it's really, really clutch. I really, really enjoy having Spartan Moolah in my deck. So this is one of the overall utilities I chose to go with. And again, it is a double strike finisher. And then we have Scientist Foo. Like I mentioned before, you can mill three on your unawakened side, flip over, mill three more on your awakened side. And if you can get one more card to grave, you can fuel your Scientist Foo in one turn. And just one of the best overall cards in the game, just draw two. Uh, swing for, again, 25k double strike. Really great at closing out the game. Then we just have one success for hope. This started up at like three, and then I was trying to fit more cards in the deck, so I ended up cutting it down to one. I'm pretty much fine with it being the fifth copy of Bardock. You know, if, if you happen to draw it later, it's just a yellow energy. It's a pretty looking yellow energy. So I'm pretty much fine with the one of this. Plus we have the four plane of Vegeta. If you wanted to cut this out for something else, you totally could do that, or you could bump it up if you wanted to. I've just been pretty much fine with the one for now. Then we have four, Bardock the uh, Progenitor. I finally said that right, I think. So the Bardock is your play starter. You're going to, you know, typically, it's it's pretty good to go first and then, like, you know, set up with a plan of Vegeta, get your Bardock or Goten, whatever pieces you're missing. And then turn two, you just go 
Bardock swing, swap out into a Goten or a Videl, summon Bardock, swing again, swing a Goten, and you just, you, this is very much a rush deck, so you, you're getting a lot of swings in, and every single swing you do is getting you another card. So it's very, very uh, usual to have like a 12 to 14 card in hand if you're, you know, if you drew, if you drew well and everything's going according to the game plan. So yeah, it's pretty insane how that works out. And like, you know, going second, uh, if you went first and on your second turn, you can very easily get five swings in uh, on the second turn. So very, very cool there. If you're enjoying an aggro style of play. Then we have the Flying Nimbus. So this is a really good card against this a the aggro format right now. It literally buys you a turn, you know, as long as you're at like, you know, four life or more, no one can really kill you through a Nimbus. So it's a uh, really, really good negate for the format. Four playing Vegeta. Four might seem like a lot. This definitely could go down to three, but I really like it because we're playing a lot of searchable targets in the deck, especially like our Shugesh combos, our Bardock co and into Goten combos. So I really like it at four. It could definitely go down to three though, if you wanted to play another Successor of Hope or maybe some more overall utility. And we have three Crusher Ball. I really like Crusher Ball this format. I feel like it puts in a ton of work, especially against the one drop brigade. It puts in some work against for seeing hit when they're trying to go for a game on you. They really can't that turn. It buys you a turn. And it's really good. Uh, decently good against Chain Zeno because you just uh, Crusher Ball the Zeno. You're going to lose this Crusher Ball anyway. So you might as well just use it then and there if you have the energy available. So that they can't get that extra swing on you and put that much more pressure on you. Then we have the Scrambling Assaults on Goten. This pair with the Bardock just gets you so many cards. You drop a Bardock, get a card from life to hand, swing with the Bardock, swap it out into the Goten, attack again, get another card to hand, and you just get like some really crazy advantage there. Every single attack gets you a card. The only kind of issue is that he's a small he's a small guy. He's only 10k. So when your leaders awaken, it's a little bit harder to pressure them, but that's why we play another card in the deck that I will mention when I get to. Then we have Gein, Family of Justice. This is a free blocker with Bardock on the field, so it works with your Bardock the Progenitor or the Bardock Will of Iron. She's really cool because if you establish multiple of her, you really give these aggro decks a huge headache, um, especially like Hurdegarn and Trunks. And uh, you know, with the amount of with the amount of cards you draw on this deck, establishing multiple is not very difficult. You can very easily establish two. I def I believe I established two in the playtesting match against the Mono Yellow Jiren deck, so. Definitely check that out. I'll put the description for that down in the link. Uh, the link for that down in the description below. And yeah, this is a really good card. It gives aggro a lot of headaches. The two Shugesh I mentioned before. We're playing Yellow Leader, so I wanted to fit in the best super combo in the deck uh, that we could possibly play. And I think a two-two split on Shugesh and other and whatever other super combo we want to play is fine. I really like Supreme Kai of Time, like I mentioned. But Shugesh is really cool because it allows you access to the Explosive Spirits on Goku, which like murders the. Uh, triple flash matchup because you don't care about countering the thing you're just gonna blow it up with you guess especially in game one it's, it's just gonna steal game one and yeah it's just a really 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 good card so and the amount of cards you draw in this deck is insane so like when she does doesn't get turned off you don't necessarily mind not having the draw one on the 10k because you have so many cards in hand it, it's pretty much fine then we have four caring mother Videl. I put this in because you don't always have the Goten open and Successor of Hope can't search Goten or Videl. So that's why at one it also seems somewhat fine. You know, like turn one, if you can go play a Vegeta and set up, it's great. But if you happen to draw the Carrying Mother Videl, you're just going to draw more cards. It gets pretty nutty. Sometimes, you know, you're swapping back your Bardock into nothing and that doesn't really feel that good. So if you can swap back your Bardock into a Videl when you don't have a Goten, it's pretty solid. Plus Videl is a card that can boost Goten and Bardock. So it can actually make them threatening swings at an awakened leader. So I really, really like that about the Videl. It just draws you more cards. And if they want to stop your... Basically, Videl becomes a foundation, a uh, factory of card draw. And if they want to stop that, they have to waste a swing that's not going to be directed at your leader at the Videl. So super, super solid card. It just, it just uh, does a lot of work in the deck. Then we have three Explosive Spirits on Goku. So like I mentioned before, this guy pairs incredibly well with Shugesh. He just murders the triple flash combo. Anything that can't be countered, it was pretty relevant against the Jiren game. I don't think we got to that point where I had to drop it on his Jiren, but yeah, it's super, super relevant. And it's one of the best combos in the game when you're not facing Kurnoa. And actually, a lot of people are deciding to cut Kurnoa from the sideboard because there's not a lot of yellows been seen at these top tier events, especially like Gen Con. So 
it might be a really good idea to kind of play mind games with the meta and decide to play a deck like this where you're playing Shigesh and Explosive Spirit. You're gonna catch a lot of people off guard, and if they don't have the sideboard ready for it, if they're not respecting yellow, you're gonna you're gonna have a really good time. Then we have the four Bardock Will of Iron. I believe it's the no, it's there's only six 10k combos in the deck, so really really good numbers there because you do need to use a lot of energy. And since we're not playing a blue leader, we don't have access to those untaps, unfortunately. But Bardock Will of Iron is one of the better finishers in the deck. You you combo him on your turn, you evolve him into the Bardock, and then you swing for a 20k double strike. And when you have Plant of Vegeta established, you just restand him. This deck does really good work at establishing multiple blockers too, between your Bardocks, between your Geens, and between your Explosive Spirits. And hard casting Explosive Spirit, if you have something you need to KO in your opponent's battlefield, is a very very valid method because you get value off of it by swinging with it, and then it restands itself. And Bardock does the same thing. When you have Plant of Vegeta established. Swing with it, it'll restand at the end of the turn, and you have a giant blocker on the field. So, that's the deck, guys. This is very much a, like, Bardock, Goten, Rush deck, and then you have your overrun utility to add even more attackers. <clears throat> so, if you are going first, you know, you set up your yellow, play your Planet of Vegeta to search, you, and then on your second turn, you just go, you go off. You go Bardock, draw a card from life, swing, swap back into Goten, attack, get another card, Bardock again, Attack, draw another card. Go 10 again. Attack, draw another card. Cooler, mill three. Time patrol trunks. Attack again. Attack with lead. Like, you just, you got, like, right there, that was six swings. So, if everything's going according to plan, which is, you know, pretty pretty simple to get off in this deck, you, you really have a, a pretty insane turn by rushing your opponent and getting a crazy amount of cards. So, there's deck profile, guys. Uh, let me know if you like this deck profile. Let me know if you would make any changes to it. Let me know if you enjoy videos like this. Please just let me know whatever you guys are thinking down in the comments below. I want to hear whatever you guys are thinking. So, with that being said, please don't forget to like, comment, subscribe if you do like this kind of video so I can get you more awesome Dragon Ball Super content. With that being said, my name is Joey, and I'll see you next time.